Hey, strangers. Welcome to episode 11 of the Strange Sessions. I'm Krista, and always with me is... Kurt. And we have quite a bit of housekeeping to get through today. A lot of housekeeping. Yeah, hopefully you'll bear with us, but I think this is all good stuff. So what should we start with? Whatever you want. So did anybody watch the uh, the disappearance of Maura Murray? I did. I did. Hands up over here. Um, we talked about it on The Strangers. If you didn't know, we have a private group on Facebook called The Strangers. Um, we just had a new person request to join today, so welcome. I should probably look and see who that is, but... I don't even know how to get there. We do have the internet here now in the studio, which is exciting. Oh, man, we're like <laughs> it's super high tech and professional now. Yeah, we can Skype and stuff. I know. So we've got like we, all of our shout outs we have right in front of us. We don't have to print stuff out and highlight and underline anymore. I still print stuff out. I'm old school uh, that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it's also, I don't know. Today is also National Coffee Day. Did you know that? I did not know that. That is why I have coffee today. I had some this morning. Plus, coffee, I think, subconsciously makes me feel smarter when I drink it. Oh. So I got that going for me. Is that like if you had patches on your elbows? No? <laughs> I don't know. Like if you had a corduroy coat that had patches. Ooh. Wouldn't that make you feel smarter? That would make me feel smarter. Horn-rimmed glasses. I do have my lucky podcasting underwear on today, uh, though. Oh. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know about these underwear. Do yep. tell. What's, what's special about these underwear? I don't know. <laughs> you just wear them every, <laughs> I just wear them every time. Every two weeks. I just keep them on. Prefer- oh, oh, okay. Crack a window. Should we crack a window? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the special. I thought it was really good. The one thing, and I mentioned this on The Strangers, but the one thing that really stood out to me was that when they retraced her steps or her, you know, her drive from getting money out of the ATM to... But how did they know? What I don't understand is how they know exactly what route she took. I don't know. Um, but they determined that it took an hour less than what it allegedly took her and i thought that was interesting i did too but i also think there could be so many different explanations for that maybe she didn't leave maybe she got the money out of the atm and then ran somewhere else before she actually left yeah went to get the liquor or whatever well she could have gone somewhere else she could have stopped and well that's part of where the theories come in that maybe somebody was with her or she was meeting up with somebody um and i mentioned too that you know here in wisconsin The speed limits have changed drastically over the last 10 to 15 years. So, I mean, that could factor into it as well. They've gone up, obviously. I think putting a lot of stock into the fact that that hour difference means something isn't a good thing because I just think there's so many different possible explanations for that. Mm -hmm. And it might not have anything to do with her actual disappearance. Yeah, that's true. So I'm excited to see where it goes. It was really interesting to see... um, what the host of the Missing Maura Murray podcast look like because you get a picture in your mind of what people look like and then you see what they look like and you're hearing the voices that you recognize so well. Yep. And you're like, oh, that's not at all what I was picturing. No, like I said in the strangers group, I kind of wish there was more of them. Yeah. But maybe there will be in future episodes. Yeah. I don't know. Not um, there's anything wrong with Maggie. I like Maggie. Yeah, she's, I, hey, I'm a chick and I've, I got a little bit of a woman crush. Yep, she is cute. She's a hottie. Uh, seeing... Fred Murray, her dad, talk about her kind of just yeah, blew really my whole hard. idea that she ran away and they're still in touch because just right. seeing him talk, you can see that. He's very emotional yeah, about it. Yeah, you can see that that's not really the case. He also seems a little strange, but... I don't think so. No? No. I, I thought there was... I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So, yeah, stay tuned. We'll keep talking about that as these episodes unfold, but I'm excited to see where they go with it. Um and who knows if they'll get any answers out of it, but sometimes it's just fun to look at it from a different perspective. I keep hearing that there's supposedly new evidence and stuff, so really? we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what, where that goes. But the one thing about this is that like the Maura Murray Facebook groups, I mean, and have so many people that watched it and now are joining the groups. Mm-hmm. You know, in a way, it's good that there's it's getting all this attention, but then you got people coming in the groups that are like, I watched the episode... Did they find her? I'm an her? expert now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not realizing that Yeah, she's did they been... find her yet? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, we had a commenter on YouTube who uh, wasn't fond of our coverage of this um, story. Veronica no. And, um, I, I, but I, hey, I, I agree with her. I do, too. We, I don't we, think we did a very good job. No. We, <laughs> no. That wasn't one of our more factually sound episodes. Not a shining moment in the strain sessions uh, history. No, but it just gave everybody but, a little hey, flavor of the. Sure, sure, sure. We're both really. 
I mean, we're passionate about the topic. I think we just tackled a, a, a case that's really complicated. And, yeah. And there's a lot of misinformation out there, obviously. So trying to weed through all of what's on the internet can be really difficult. But yes. anyway, we'll stick. We'll try to stick to topics we know about, like the Mandela effect. Yes. Um, but before that, uh, in case you haven't caught on, that's what we're talking about today. The Mandela effect, which is a very popular topic these days. But I wanted to do a, a couple of quick more pieces of housekeeping. Um, in last week's episode, last not last week's episode, episode 10, we talked about the local Slenderman case here in Wisconsin, or as Rebecca, Kurt's friend, Rebecca. Becky. Becky. Oh, I'm sorry. Becky Rutherford. She, she said that we should pronounce it like the guys from Blurry Photos. And what do they say? Slenderman? Slenderman. Slenderman. Um, so the, the young girl who was 12 at the time that she committed this crime with her friend. Um, just a quick recap. These two girls who claimed to believe in Slender Man stabbed a fellow friend 19 times in an attempt to kill her to appease Slender Man or Slenderman. They have finally started going to trial. And the first girl, Anissa Weir, Anissa Weir, she was found, I guess, not guilty by reason of insanity. And she will spend, they think, up to three years in a mental hospital. At least three years in a mental hospital. And the other girl who was part of the attack, um, what is her name? Morgan Geyser. Morgan Geyser. Her trial, I believe, is starting in October. So but she's going to plead insanity, too. I mean, of she's course. saying that she... You kind of ha- <laughs> have to. <laughs> well, you kind of have to think that they got to be a little crazy yeah. to have done what they did. But at the same time... They were also young. Uh, so they were 12. That's crazy. Yeah. Who decides they're going to stab someone? 19, you know, it's just sad. I know the family is pretty disappointed with that verdict, but. At least the girl lived. Yeah. And uh, she's, yeah, thriving. Yep. So that's great. A um, couple shout outs on Facebook. Do you want to mention anyone? Want to give a shout out to Gabriel Zeros and Todd Deary. They both gave us good reviews on, I think they both gave us five-star reviews on our page. So thank you very much, guys. Yeah, that's amazing. And I just wanted to say, Gabriel, I don't talk like I'm from Wisconsin, so I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about there, hey. Every now and then when I'm editing, it's I cringe a little bit. No, we, oh, at me or at you? At both of us. <laughs> at both of us. We do have the Wisconsin accents going on. We'll go to a class or something. There's got to be a pill for that. There's got to be something for that. <laughs> but we, yeah, we really... Really appreciate you guys rating us. And I think uh, Gabriel even shared a link on his Facebook page to, you know, his friends or whatever. Yes, so, so thank you for that. Yeah, that's super cool. We're just excited that people we don't know are listening. And I also want to give a personal shout out to my good friend, Melissa Mertens. She, she's uh, one that submitted stories to Paranormal Palaver to you guys. Yeah. So I think she's going to probably submit one for our 15th episode. A recording, right? Yeah, I don't know if a recording or, That'd a, be so cool. or a, a written one. Yeah. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to her. Her birthday's in two days. So happy oh, birthday, happy Melissa. Birthday. Yeah. Even though by the time you hear this, it'll be past your birthday. Sure. Yeah. But still, we're thinking about you. So happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. And and that's it for my shout outs. Well, I also wanted to mention my co-host, Joe, uh, co-host on Paranormal Palaver, is getting married tomorrow. Woo-hoo. So congratulations to congratulations, Joe, Joe and his lovely fiance, bride-to-be Miranda. By the time you guys listen to this episode, you will be married. So that's super exciting. Congratulations. I hope no Illuminati shows up at your wedding. Yeah. Oh, Just geez. saying. Yeah. I'm glad he's not listening to this ahead of time. He'll get all paranoid. <laughs> um, and one more mention. Um, Tobias Wayland. He gave us a, left a message and a couple links, I think, on our Facebook page about the Chicago quote-unquote Mothman sightings, he is part of, I guess, a task force that is tracking all of these sightings and interviewing people. And there's some, his, par- he said his partner, Emily, they're from the Singular Illinois. Fortean Society. Yes. And I think Sophie and maybe a couple other people have posted. And Barry's friends with him on Facebook, I believe. Yeah. So interesting. we connection. kind of know him by association, it's I guess. It's like six S- degrees it's like of Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> Um, and so I mentioned to him that it'd be so cool to have them on the show because I'm really fascinated with what's going on down in the Chicago area and they seem like they would have the best information to share. So 
we are working on hopefully getting an interview with them and maybe do a whole episode on yes this timeline and these sightings that are happening down there. So thank you, Tobias, for sharing the link that you sent, and hopefully we'll be in touch. Anyone else? Are we missing anyone? I think that's... Oh, I want to I want to thank uh, Sarah McFarlane, our Canadian stranger. I think our one Canadian Canada. stranger for sending us an audio clip of a ghost story. Oh, one of she's her ghost the one stories. who sent the audio yes. clip. Okay, I was yes. getting them confused. Yeah, so, thank you. I'm so excited. You'll be our listeners will hear, hear that on which episode? 15? Fifteen. That'll be our yeah. final episode for this season. Season one finale. It'll be uh, personal encounters. So write to us. If you have the ability to record. If you have the ability to record, record and we'll play it on the show. If you want to write to us, write to us with any of your personal paranormal stories. Yeah, that'd be very cool. And she's super active on our clo- our private group, The Strangers. So yeah, that's had, pretty we cool. We had quite the thread going on uh, more Marie last yeah, night. Yeah, totally. Cool. I think that's it for housekeeping. My goal is still to someday get more Murray on here to be interviewed. Yeah. Mostly because I don't want to think she's dead. I want to think she's still alive out there, even I know, though I kind of right? don't anymore. I don't know. I'm really torn. I, I feel like if, there's if not enough evidence either way. If she's not, I want her to have walked off into the woods. Not and murdered. died. No, I mean she had what two crashes in the course of how long? <laughs> it sucks that. to think that <laughs> right. she had two crashes, and then she runs into somebody that kills her. That's just sour luck, and I don't want her to have that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, should we get? Uh... Oh, we were going to. Oh, we're... oh hello. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Chris and I are also going to have a mini investigation here tonight in the school. Yeah, last last episode we, we had, had crazy weird stuff, stuff happen going on. Oh, after we recorded the podcast building we, uh, completely to ourselves, and we heard stuff moving in the room next yeah, to us we just and... got done recording the podcast i think the sun had gone down by that time so we were sitting here talking and we heard what sounded like something metal being moved in the room next to us yeah with the it has a window looking into the room which is pretty creepy which is creepy i don't know why we don't ever <laughs> shut those because <laughs> when it's dark you can't see i don't know yeah. why why don't we shut those but um, we heard something move in there and then shortly after that krista and i were talking about that and i heard the sound out in the hallway of somebody walking with boots on mm-hmm. but the motion light never came on so there was nobody out there yeah and while we were talking about that krista heard somebody's el- somebody else's voice talking over mine yeah either a female voice it's it sounded kind of like mm-hmm. it was like making fun of me i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't know it was either a child or a female that's yeah. what it sounded like but there's nobody and then it just here felt weird in the building we yeah. did not like being we wanted to get out of here yeah we did not like being in the building so tonight after the recording of the podcast we are going to have a little mini investigation and if we come up with anything interesting we will have it on the show yeah in two weeks yeah if you don't ever hear from us again yeah you'll know where to look <laughs> exactly <laughs> we're we're just hoping nobody shows up here because this school is used by people other than us so um we're just hoping that because if people show up here we can't really do an no, investigation it's gonna be very hard to do an investigation when you have people playing noise. basketball in the gymnasium yeah oh I just got a response from Tobias. I love Wi-Fi <laughs> <laughs> saying, um, cause I told him that we, you know, we're not all that high tech. We're looking for a way to interview people who aren't actually in the room with us right now. Um, and I said that we'll hopefully maybe get some kind of Skype thing together. So Tobias says, no worries. We're just in Madison, though. So it's conceivable that we come to you if necessary. It would be nice. That'd if, be really cool. It would be nice if he could come with Barry. Oh, that'd be really cool. That would be really cool. She lives in that area. And Bergen, if she wanted to come. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. And Emily. Guys, work that out. Okay. But I think we're good to go. Should we hop on the Mandela train? Let it. Let's. Slide on to Let's that. slide on to the Mandela train. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, I want to start with a disclaimer that I'm a big believer in the Mandela effect. I want to get that out there right I am off too. the bat. I am too because there are too I many know. things that I can't I like ignore. Well, I want to. I know that I discussed this in the Paranormal Palaver episode where you guys interviewed me, but I had like a a big experience with this quite a few years ago. Is that the yeah. the New Zealand thing? Yeah. Um what happened was this was around 2007 2008. I'm not exactly sure when this was. Oh, before I get to this, I want to say 
what the Mandela effect is. I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just assuming that most people listening to this know what the it Mandela effect is. It is such a popular is. topic now, but yeah, yeah. You, you so should if, probably... in case you don't, uh, a definition that I found online of the Mandela effect says. The Mandela effect is the pseudoscientific belief that there are differences between people's memories and the real world that are being caused by changes to reality itself, also known as collective false memories and alter vu, which is like deja vu, but alter vu is where you know something happened, but it didn't, apparently. Alter vu. Alter vu. I've never heard that term I didn't before. either until today I was looking that up. But, yeah, so basically what it is, is when you remember something that you swear happened, and you find out you were wrong. Mm -hmm. Like Jiffy Peanut Butter? Like Jiffy Peanut Butter. (laughs) That is one of the examples. Uh, It was the the phrase Mandela Effect was coined in 2010 by Fiona Broom, and the name comes from Broom's unshakable belief that South African political leader Nelson Mandela died in jail during the 1980s. He was actually freed in 1990 and became president in 1994. She was at a convention where she was talking to people and realized that a lot of other people shared this belief that he died in the 80s, mm-hmm. only to find that he was alive. Yeah, he just died in like 2011 or yeah, something. Yeah, recently. It? So that's where the name the Mandela Effect came from. It is when you are certain of something from the real world that you find out never happened. I think um, another common one is Kirk Douglas. Isn't it Kirk Douglas? a whole bunch of people remembered Kirk Douglas dying that it was on the news. Like he had like a massive heart attack or something. Oh, and I just, I was just reading today that there's a lot of people that remember Hugh Hefner dying years ago. Really? Yeah. When he actually died, what yesterday, there's a lot of people that remember him dying years ago, but Kirk Douglas just turned a hundred. So it's one of those, it's another one of those where people remember seeing it on the news that he had died. Yep. So that's interesting. Uh, We're going to get into several examples in a little bit. But uh, my personal experience with this was back in 2007, 2008. I'm not exactly sure when. I know Krista knows the story because I've Mm -hmm. talked about this. At the time, I had a good friend named Francesca Chess. She lived in New Zealand with her family. And we'd be chatting all the time on the computer and stuff. So her and her family would take trips to Australia quite a bit from New Zealand. And she would tell me where she was going and she'd be like, well, pull up a map of New Zealand and, and Australia and you can see where we're going, all that stuff. So around, I'm guessing it's 2007. Around 2007, I was on the Above Top Secret message board, which is uh, paranormal stuff, UFO stuff, mm-hmm. conspiracy stuff, uh it's a really fascinating board. It's like, I want to say maybe 40% really well-spoken, intelligent, insightful people and like 60% kooks. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, not too bad of a ratio. Too bad. No. <clears throat> and, uh, but I was reading a thread, something, uh, the thread, the name of the thread was something like, have the timelines changed or something like mm-hmm. that. And I thought it would be good for a laugh. So I was scrolling through it, reading it. And I got to a post where some guy posted to me, New Zealand has always been northwest of Australia. So I kept going, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, New Zealand is northwest of Australia. So I quickly pulled up a map of New Zealand and found out that it had totally moved from where I remember it being. That's so weird. Especially since you have these memories of looking at the map. Yeah, that's the thing is that I was very familiar with where New Zealand was in relation to Australia because of all the times that I checked the maps. So I was just shocked. And I remember. The two people I texted about it that day were you and Sophie, and you both basically poo pooed <laughs> like, me yeah, saying that I was nuts. on drugs. <laughs> Although I couldn't point out New Zealand on a yeah. map right now. <laughs> so. But I was just I was just shocked. I mean, to me, that's how a skeptic would feel if they saw a ghost. Right. Because just everything I knew was just completely crumbled. Turned upside down. You know, I went back and looked at maps from like the eighteen hundreds and stuff, and they had New Zealand in a totally different place. That's the crazy thing. You can't find proof of what yeah. you, yeah, what because you know whatever's is changed true. is changed retroactively yeah. back throughout history. It's like the Berenstein Bears thing. We're going to get to that too. Okay, yeah. because people go yep. looking for books and yep. it's crazy. But other people in this on this thread too were saying the same thing. They were like, wow, I remember New Zealand being northwest of hmm. Australia. And then one guy on the on the board photoshopped where he remembered it being and there were a bunch of us that are like that's exactly where we remember it being 
So I was just stunned by this. And yeah. that's when I kind of got into following this stuff. And that's kind of when I got into the, I've always been fascinated by the paranormal stuff, but that's when I got into the big picture stuff, like reality, parallel universes. Yeah. And like I what was, could be causing this? Yeah. I was kind of keeping track of this. And what's really weird, and I think I told you this, but I don't remember, is that at this time, when New Zealand had moved from northwest of Australia, it had moved to northeast of Australia, hugging the coastline, like really close to the coast of Australia. And just within the past couple months, I looked, and now it's southeast. So it's completely moved around. It's completely Again? Mo- yeah, it's completely moving around Australia to me. Huh. Where it was before this, it was it was long and slender, and it was hugging the coastline, like really close to the coast of Australia. And now, just I want to say a month ago, I just happened to look again, and now it's south, way far south. So have you looked online to see if anyone else has noticed that too? One of the things is when I was uh, researching the stuff with the Mandela effect, it comes up a lot that people are saying New Zealand or Australia are always changing and always moving. Oh, that's strange. So does it lie somewhere like, you know, the way lines? Do you know about the way lines? The way lines. Ley lines. Jeez, clearly I don't know enough about it. But... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, it's moved from northwest of Australia to northeast of Australia to south east of australia so it's like basically bouncing around and every every couple of years it's almost like it's in a different place when i look well now i need to bring it up on a map and this is a common thing this and a lot of the ones that a lot of the pages i looked at today talked about people saying that new zealand has moved or australia is in a different position or australia looks different well yeah that's interesting because it's not really all that close to australia no, the way you're and, describing and before, it it was like hugging the coastline like it was like you could swim across it it was so close and there's nothing over there no and i'll be the first one to admit that my geography skills aren't the best but i was very familiar you have a reason to remember it yeah hmm. and i want to say that as far as the mandela effect i am 100 percent on board with it but i can't i'm like 95 percent on board with it because i could be wrong but it's just so weird to me that this has happened now twice where yeah it's not where i remember it being and i know that sounds crazy i know how crazy that sounds but a lot of these other examples we're going to bring up today i totally buy i totally remember them the wrong yeah. way oh me too yeah well and i think what's number one i think it's hard for us to admit that it's happening because yeah, it's kind of scary that's, that's in the theories too yeah but the other part is that you can't come up with an explanation that no. really makes a whole lot of no. sense so that's why it's hard to wrap your head around yeah and with the new zealand thing there were a lot of people that remember it being where i remember it being hmm. it'd be one thing if it was just me but it wasn't just me hmm. okay so that's my personal experience with it and i've actually been kind of following this stuff and studying this stuff since that happened yeah and it was. It's weird for me to see how it's blown up since then that I never thought this was going to be a mainstream thing. Right. Oh, yeah. It's all over now. And, you know, where it got really known is example number one on my examples, and that was what you mentioned with the Berenstein Bears. Mm-hmm. And that was the crazy one that got everybody kind of like, wow. And I, the Berenstein Bears, there's two different ways people remember it. It's Stein or Stain. When I pronounced it Berenstein. So did I. But spelled E I N, right? Yeah. And then, but. It, but it's w- actually A I N. S T A I N, like stain, like Berenstein bears. I. Yeah, no, that's not what it was. No. <laughs> I don't remember. And you tell people that, or what we were. I doing... actually had an experience with this many years ago. I was at my friend Angie's house, and she had two young boys at the time, and there was a Berenstein bears book laying out. And her and I got into an argument about this because I said, why is it spelled differently wrong? I mean, why is it spelled? Why is it, <laughs> Subliminal message. <laughs> why is, why it, is spelled it spelled differently wrong? now? Yeah. You know, and, and she said it's always been like that. That's... And it hasn't because when I was a kid, I was like an insanely huge reader. Mm-hmm. And I would have known because we would have made jokes about it being stain. Stain, right. You know, like poop stain. We would have made tons of jokes about it, and we didn't because it was always Stein. It was never Stain. Well, that's the funny thing. Like, I was just at a Goodwill, and I found a really old copy of a Baron Steen Bears book. And, of course, 
It doesn't matter how old the book is that you find. It says stain. It's barren stain. No, barren. Uh, you cannot and, find And proof. people are saying that if it's changed in reality, it's changed in the past. So you're yeah. not going to find. But then people on, on the internet have posted like VCR tape covers where it's spelled the right way. Really? But that's just. It could be Photoshopped. It could be Photoshopped or it could be a printing error. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, I totally remember it being S-T. E-I-N. E-I-N. Um, okay, what's the next one? Uh, the next one that you and I have talked about, too, is that we remember there being a peanut butter called Jiffy. There was a peanut butter called Jiffy. There is a Jiff and a Skippy, obviously. But I hate it when people say that, though, because it's not... I know what Skippy is. I That's have what friends, my parents I have friends always that, uh, that completely 100% remember a Jiffy peanut butter. I remember what the jar looked like. Yeah, my friend Brooks swears that... That's what they used to eat when they were kids was Jiffy. Yeah. Well, we didn't. We bought Skippy. But I know that there was such a thing as Jiffy peanut butter. I know there was. And it blow. That's. I don't know why this one bothers me more than any of them. But I just, I remember it. It's like, it's a childhood memory that I have so vividly that I just, I really have a hard time believing that it didn't exist. Yeah. A lot of people do. A lot of people remember. I know it's just peanut butter. A lot of people remember (laughs) Jiffy. Being a peanut butter. Yes, absolutely. We never bought Jeff because it was that really sugary, gross, like kind of like Peter Pan stuff. We never bought that. But I don't know. That one sticks in my craw for some reason. That one sticks in a lot of people's craws <laughs> because I can remember it. it I can kind of remember what the label looked like. Yes. But it apparently never existed. <sighs> well, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot find a picture of it or any kind of reference to it other than Mandela Effect articles. And a third example I have of the Mandela effect, I'm not going to go into too deep because I believe you're going to have somebody on Paranormal Palaver yeah. to discuss this, yeah. is the fact that a lot of people said that passages in the Bible have changed. Mm-hmm. Like overnight, they're just different. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a friend at work named Pat that listens, listens to the podcast. And he hi, asked, Pat. hi, Pat. <laughs> he asked me last weekend what the topic was going to be this week. So I brought this up and he had never heard of this. And he said, yeah, there was a guy at work that was telling him that passages changed in the Bible. Yeah. And I said, yep, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. So people are kind of starting to realize this. But just to go into the one example, the the big one is that everybody remembers the lion shall lay down with the lamb. And that's not, that's changed. It's not in the Bible anymore. It says, now the actual passage is the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the kid. Which those are two wildly different yeah, things. Yeah, because too. everybody remembers the lion will lay down with the lamb. Yeah, that's weird. Well, and and one example I heard on a Jim Harold um, paranormal podcast episode was, and this one really sticks with me because I was raised Catholic. I went to a private Catholic school. I went. I mean, I w- was exposed to a lot of like Bible stuff and Catholicism, and the Lord's Prayer was a staple of Mass. In, in Catholicism, and there's a line that says, um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And apparently somewhere along the line, that changed to forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I have never heard of that. And I have heard that, but I thought that was just like how, you know, different religions will take something and sort of make it their own if you want it. You know, yeah. so to say, I, I didn't realize that the Bible had actually changed. Yeah. So the the guest that we're going to have on Paranormal Palabra is Jim Parker. He's somebody that we all work with at, um, well, I don't know if I should say where we work, but Jeff, Joe, and I work with this person and he's a pastor and he's been a pastor for 20 years. So he is incredibly familiar with the Bible and he says that there have been things that he would know like the back of his hand that have changed. So I'm pretty excited to see what kind of stuff he brings. Yeah, I am excited to hear that one. I'm excited for that. Uh, Example number four is one that I believe we talked about when Joe was here for, I think it was our Shadow People episode. Yeah. It was from the James Bond movie Moonraker from 1979. Jaws. Yeah, where Jaws is a is a name of I think it's Richard Keel. I think he was the actor. He was a bad guy in the movie and he had teeth made out of metal. Yeah. And during the course of the movie he meets this cute little blonde girl and they fall in love and he ends up like becoming a good guy. But there's a point at the end of the movie where he smiles at her and she smiles back at him and so many people including myself remember that when she smiles back at him she has braces. 
And all of a sudden, that's where everybody's like, oh, you know, that's kind of what they have in common is that she has metal in her mouth, too. Right. That's their connection. And now she does not have braces. She smiles Uh at him and there are no braces. That's interesting. And this one freaks a lot of people out because this is like one of their first examples of this. And they're like, you know, people have gone back and looked at different versions of the movie and Mm -hmm. she never has braces. But I vividly remember her having braces. I remember what the braces look like on her. But she does not have braces in the movie. (laughs) That there are a lot of movie examples too that blow a lot of people's minds. Yeah, yeah, but that's, but that's we're 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 so um, wow I can't talk pop culture movies music that is stuff that we all really connect to and so we remember certain things yeah. from certain movies. Um, so we all you know remember those iconic moments and phrases from movies. So it's kind of like really. It's, it shakes you a bit when yep. you realize that it's not right. No, we'll get to that in one of the theories. Okay, too. good. It's kind, of, it's kind of tied in with one of those. But, I mean, I completely remember her having braces. Okay, and I've a, never a seen that movie. A lot of people remember her having braces and are freaked out by the fact that she does, does, not. does not have braces. Okay. And these next three are new to me. I have never seen these before, but all three of these kind of freak me out a little bit. Ooh, maybe they'll be new to me. I'm um, excited. Number five goes back to the 80s TV show, The A-Team. I was a huge A-Team fan. And the A-Team had a van. And I specifically remember the van was completely black except for a red stripe going down like diagonally. And when you watch it now, the bottom half is black and above the red stripe, it's gray. And it was never gray before. It was Mm -hmm. completely black. I had a Matchbox car version of the A-Team van that was black, except for the red stripe. Interesting. So and a lot I, of people, I when I read this one, much. a lot of people went and looked, and they're like, what the hell? It hmm. used to be completely black, and now it is black and gray. That's weird. Yeah, it never was. This next one is probably the one that freaked me out the most, because I totally remember this. And this one is... From the Fruit of the Loom underwear or (laughs) t-shirts. Okay. But so many people, including myself, remember the logo having a cornucopia in it. You know, like the horn that was in the background and the fruit was in front of it. Like the fruit was coming out of the cornucopia. I guess if I Google Fruit of the Loom logo, I'm not going to get what you're talking about. You're going to see ones that people made up. Oh, okay. That's good. But yeah, a lot of people remember it having the cornucopia in the back. I specifically remember what the cornucopia looked like. I remember the fruit was in front of it. And a lot of people said, well, maybe it was just like a 70s thing. So a lot of people went back and looked at the logo back in the 70s, and they never had a cornucopia there. (laughs) And that's the weirdest one to me because I specifically remember that it did. Mm -hmm. And I was reading messages from people that said that that's how they learned what a cornucopia was. Was fruit of the loom? Because people said it was what was the fruit of the loom logo. Wow. So people are freaked out that the cornucopia isn't there anymore. Okay. It's weird how it's little things like that, but it's things that like thousands of people notice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Example number seven is the Mona Lisa. A lot of people, including myself, remember her having a little bit of a hint of a smile. And that was always what kind of made it mysterious. Yeah, that was was always the Is she smiling? Like, is she smiling or not? Is she smirking? Is she smirking? But now when you look, it looks like she has just a complete smile. I didn't know that had changed. I thought it was still... Because that's the whole thing. Why is she so? But people of, like me remember her having... It was like, like just a hint just of a smile. Barely. Yeah, that's But if what you I look remember. now, she has a smile. Example number eight is the Monopoly Man. Oh, So many people remember the Monopoly Man having a monocle. monocle? Yeah. I remember him I having do. a monocle. Yeah. And he has never had a monocle. Mm-hmm. If you don't know, that's the little one-eyed glass that... A lot of people like said they think that in their eye. <laughs> a lot of the people that are skeptical about this say that we're mix, mixing up the Monopoly guy with Mr. Peanut, <laughs> which makes no sense to me. No. <laughs> yeah, man. Because Mr. Mr. Peanut, Peanut has a monocle. <laughs> they both dress kind of classy. <laughs> no, I think, you know, and it could be a case where it just seems like something a, a rich or wealthy man would wear back in the 1920s or whenever no, there, Monopoly there's came people to that be. swear that he had a monocle. They remember him having a monocle. Hmm. I see, when I picture him, I see a monocle. Yeah, and I didn't for play sure. Monopoly enough to know for sure. Hmm. But I did. <laughs> I would have guessed he had a monocle. Yeah. Uh, number nine, there's actually a couple in this one, are a lot of people said car logos have changed. Hmm. Uh, the Ford logo now has 
the line that crosses and the F has like a little squiggle at the end that people said has never been there before. This one you guys might have to. And this is like an old school one, right? Like even because logos change all the time. No, this has always been like this. Okay. Yeah, this is one you guys are going to have to look up because it's hard to, to show you pictures on a podcast. So Ford, but the Ford logo, the F, the line that crosses in the F has a swoop and a circle at the end that a lot of people say never was there before. Hmm. I'm looking at it. What the hell? It's got like a curly Q. Yeah. And a lot of people say that has never been there before. Um, Volkswagen logo. If you look up Volkswagen logo, it now has a white line that separates the V and W. You might have to look this one up on Google to see what I'm talking about, but the mm-hmm. V and W are separated. And a lot of people say that that used to not be separated. So that's why I, the logo thing is hard for me because I feel like, you know, one day marketing could have been like, hey, we should put a line there. I mean, logos, the company I worked at, the logo has changed within the last couple of years. But yeah, those are two of the... But what really gets me is like when a line from a movie changes Mm -hmm. or a character from a movie. Well, that's my last... Star Wars That's my last... uh, My last one is that people remember the line from Snow White being mirror, mirror on the wall. And it's not. It's magic mirror on the wall. But everybody remembers it being mirror, mirror on the wall. Really? Mm-hmm. It's magic mirror on the wall? Mm-hmm. That's annoying. <laughs> but a lot of people a lot of people remember it being mirror mirror on the wall. Okay, what else you got for movie ones? Well that's it for now. But movie ones we'll get into okay. later in one of the theories. One of the theories. Okay. Uh what other ones would you I don't know. The Jiffy P <laughs> really annoys me. No, I can't think of any. No. I can't You know think that of any there's the Shazam one, one oh. where a lot of people Believe that Sinbad, the comedian... Played a genie in a movie. Played a genie in a movie, and he didn't. Although now they made a trailer. He just recently made a trailer. No way. Yeah, (laughs) because so many people believe this, that he was in a movie where he played a genie. There was a movie called Kazam where Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, played a genie. Yeah, but it's not But a lot of people swear that the comedian Sinbad also had a movie where he played a genie. Didn't someone say, though, that he would sometimes do stand-up wearing a weird outfit that like resembled like he'd wear big pants and yeah it, it could be hmm. that is one that i remember i remember it that was a thing it was a movie but if you want to look up more of these just just google it you're gonna find yeah. tons of examples of this talk about rabbit holes these you're were just some of the newer one. ones that i brought up today yeah there's a whole bunch of ones that just get regurgitated over and over again so that's kind of the cool Bernstein that bears one is the big one that's the one yeah. that got people to realize that something is going on mm-hmm. something strange because we all remember that from our childhood that's yeah. like a, something that's just kind of ingrained in your memory yeah, but the jiffy one is a personal <sighs> and i love thorn on our side because <laughs> i remember jiffy peanut butter too yes so when we get to theories, there's basically two theories, and there's sub-theories in both of these. Okay. The first main theory, there is no Mandela effect. It it's doesn't just faulty exist. memory? Yep. Uh, but how can millions of people remember things the wrong way the same? I don't know. Hmm. Sub, the sub-theory under that one, A, is people are just misremembering. And but I guess we're that's all mis- misremembering it the same way. That's the yeah. weird part to me. But I uh, sure is it possible? Yeah. Sure. Uh, tied in with that is sub theory B, which says that's kind of the way the brain works. Uh, well, the, I always joke that you have to, like, if you're at work and you're learning something new and complicated, you probably just had to delete like your cousin's birthday mm-hmm. out of your memory yep, because you got to make too. room for new yep. stuff. I tell them if they ever want me to learn something new, that means something old is <sighs> out the window. But it's not that we're forgetting stuff; no. it's that memories are changing. Uh, so how does the brain work that way? On what February 16th, 2017, the Discover Magazine blog had an article called Collective False Memories, What's Behind the Mandela Effect. Okay. I'm uh, intrigued. And I'm, this, is, this is from, this is taken directly from the article. Okay. The article states, first, it's important to remember that a memory is made up of a network of neurons in the brain that store the memory. The physical location of the memory in the brain is often called an engram or a memory trace. During consolidation, the memory trace is transferred from temporary sites such as the hippocampus to permanent storage sites in the brain such as the prefrontal cortex. Recalling a memory reactivates the neurons composing the memory trace 
spurring them to form new connections, which makes sense because when you remember something, you're probably tying it into whatever you're thinking about at the time that you remember it. Uh, One of the examples that they brought up about this that I totally buy into is uh, before the hullabaloo about this musical, if you would have asked people who Alexander Hamilton was, like the majority, they said that the majority of people would have said he was a president. (laughs) Yeah, right. He just has that kind of name. Yeah. And he wasn't a president, but people said why, why you're remembering that is because Hamilton is on money Mm -hmm. and most Most of the people on money are presidents and they're saying that's why you are making this unconscious connection thinking that he's a president when he's not so they 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 theorize that some of this mandela effect stuff is a memory tied to something else i think that could explain some of it there's also something called confabulation which is the brain's attempt to fill in missing memory gaps by adding fabricated facts and experiences that never happened. It's kind of like matrixing when you see something yes. in a photo that's not there. Your brain does that sometimes. It if there's no connection the between space. two things, yeah. it makes up a connection between two things. And it said confabulation seems to be more frequent in the face of repeatedly unpacking a memory. So the more you pull out this memory of something, the more your brain fills in details around mm. it that might not have existed. Which what? is, I think, is super fascinating because that's basically your brain working against you. So what I think is interesting ab- about that is, so when, for Paranormal Palaver, we did an episode on the Mandela Effect too, and leading up to that, we would ask random people, family, friends, coworkers, we would phrase it like this. Do you remember that show or those books or that cartoon as a kid? It was a bunch of bears. And we would wait for them to tell us what the name of the sh- the show or the books were. And then we would say, do you remember how that was spelled? We never gave anybody the choice. Everybody yep. said Berenstein Bears, not Stain Bears. Yep. And when you tell them, that's not it. That's wrong. You're you're telling it wrong. It's Berenstein Bears. They all are just like, what are you talking yeah. about? That's not possible. And that, that kind of goes into sub, sub theory C, which is suggestibility. Um, but we, I guess what I'm saying is we were trying to yes, veer we were completely trying to avoid away that. from the suggestibility uh, Suggestibility says we tend to believe what other people say is true and the way a question is phrased can lead a person to remember things incorrectly. Like if, if you were to ask somebody, do you remember the 1990s film Shazam that starred Sinbad as a genie? It suggests that the film actually exists right. and it could insert a false memory into the person. That's like saying, do you remember Jiffy Peanut Butter? Well, yeah, of course I do. Well... That maybe those people are thinking Skippy and Jeff. Yeah. But, and though. also going I along, remember it. <laughs> also going along with, you know, your, your memories being linked to other memories, people uh, theorize that that's what the Sinbad one is. Because when you hear the name Sinbad, you think of the old literary or the folk tale Sinbad the Sailor mm-hmm. that maybe had adventures, genies, and all that, yeah. and you somehow tie that to the comedian Sinbad. I have such a visual of it though. Mm-hmm. Like I can see it and the outfit was purple. <laughs> that yeah, could be I mean, wrong. I, I, totally, <laughs> but... I totally think so too. I, 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 I understand it. I, I can see these explanations make sense, but I just don't think that they're the answer for all of this. Uh, sub, I keep want to say subsection. <laughs> sub theory D is confirmation bias. Uh, that says that the people that are seeking out the Mandela effect will often more easily be persuaded by other claims about the Mandela sure. effect. You know, and then with such claims they may agree with, they will often discard any evidence against the contrary. And I, uh-huh. I, I can totally believe that. Sure. I try really hard not to be that no, way. But I think everybody is. I mean, that comes back with the Maura Murray stuff, where once you're convinced that your mm-hmm. theory about what happened to her is right, everything else is you pooey. kind of just happen to push aside the stuff that doesn't fit it Mm -hmm. as i poo poo all of these explanations (laughs) (laughs) you really are you are poo pooing all over the place sorry Uh, maybe i should borrow your lucky underwear (laughs) (laughs) ew ew Uh, yeah sub theory e is something called cryptomnesia oh okay crypto it's like amnesia Cryptomnesia occurs when a forgotten memory returns without it being recognized as such by the subject that's when you have a memory that all of a sudden pops up and you think it's a new idea or a new thought. And this, this actually has been 
discuss lately when they're talking about people. I don't remember if Dane Cook was one of them, but they're talking about comedians who use other people's material unintentionally. Yeah, and this kind of happened. Songs. This kind of happened with yeah. George Harrison with uh, "My Sweet Lord," mm. where it was like the the same melody as the chiffons he's so fine oh yeah, yeah and yeah. he says it wasn't meant to be like that 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 just was like a melody that came to him yeah not and realizing he, not realizing that it wasn't he heard his it song. before yeah yeah so hmm. that's basically your imagination you're thinking about imagining something becoming a actual memory hmm. that's cryptomnesia that's okay. one of the theories interesting mm-hmm. uh sub theory f is that's cognitive dissonance Okay. Cognitive These dissonance. These all sound so like scientific. <laughs> Technical. Yeah. Cognitive dissonance, dissonance is the mental stress or discomfort experienced by an individual who is confronted by new information that conflicts with existing beliefs or ideas. Yeah. And that's what you're going through right now. Where Absolutely. You're, you're refusing to believe that <laughs> Jiffy didn't exist. That Jiffy didn't exist. Yeah. That is cognitive dissonance. Okay. Uh, okay, and this is the one that you're looking for, is sub-theory E, which is mishearing things, spelling errors, or misattribution. Okay. That is one of the th- ones that came up constantly in this is from Star Wars, that the quote is not, Luke, oh. I am your father. It's, it's no, no, I am, I your, am father. your father. Yeah. And I personally think that one is dumb because the way I look at it, you see the movie and you want to bring that quote up, to your friends or whatever, you're not going to say, no, I am your father. You're going to say, Luke, I am your father to give it some sort of context. So once they say Luke, they're going to know you're talking about Star Wars. Mm. And also over the years, so many other, I think family guys, so many other things have used the phrase, Luke, I am your father, that we, we become used to thinking that, that, that that's, that that's the actual yeah. phrase. You know, and that's like, it's like people believing that uh, play it again, Sam is said in Casablanca. When it's not, huh. that phrase is never said in there, but it's always connected with that film. Yeah, you know the actual quote was something like "You played it for her, you can play it for me." Oh, so not even it's close. not even close to play it again, <laughs> yeah. Sam. And I think that's what a lot of these movie quote ones yeah, are, like the Field like, of Dreams, like Field of Dreams, like uh, the fact that uh, Forrest Gump says life was like a box of chocolates. He never says life is like I a know. box of chocolates. You know what's funny is that we, my husband and I were going shopping and just before we got out of the car, we heard someone in a commercial make a reference to that phrase and it was like a, they were trying to tie it into something they were selling and they said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get or whatever. So I was like, see, it's interesting that. It's, it's like once it, once it gets picked up by like the collective consciousness, that becomes the quote, whether yeah. it's right or not. Or somebody somebody famous misquotes it once. Yeah, everybody yep. repeats that. The, okay, back to Star Wars though. CP three O with his leg. With his, his leg. His his he leg. He has a silver leg. He does have a silver down. leg. I mean, I I I a, do I'm not remember that. I'm not a Star Wars guy, so I really can't chime in on this one. I mean, I'm not like a super fan, but I've seen the but movies more than once. But a lot of people are freaked once. out when they find out that he has a silver leg. That his From whole body is down. not gold. He right. has a silver leg. I, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I've always remembered him solid gold. Uh, also, going along with this, mishearing things uh, too that people talk about all the time that I think are nothing are that people believe the name of the movie was Interview with a Vampire. Those are like... Yeah. Yeah, but Interview with a and with the... Sound the same. When you're telling somebody... Th when you tell somebody, with, I went to see Interview with a Vampire... You could have just said the or a right there. Yeah, and, I and that's the, the thing difference. is that people get confused when they hear... It's well, the same it's, thing with Sex and the City. Yeah. It's, it's always been Sex and, and the, the city, city, but yeah. a lot of people think it's Sex in the City. Yeah. And it's not, but it's when you say sex in the city, it's it can be either yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing about interview with the vampire is that the TH at the end of with combined with either a uh or the, I mean, it's really easy for those to become kind of blurry. So I could, I could see that. Yeah. Neither one of those really got me, but I, I was a huge fan of sex in the city. So I always knew that that was the title. So it's interesting how some of them you're like, all in on and others i'm like no that was never what it was no and <laughs> so I mean, why is it selective like that I why is it hit or I don't miss know. you think it, it would either be all or nothing uh, when you get there's also misspellings in here and this one i am kind of on the fence about that 
I specifically remember the word dilemma being spelled D-I-L-E-M-N-A. Oh, really? And it's not. It's D-I-L-E-M-M-A. No. Yeah, I never... But I, I remember it being M-N. You're an English I was reading major. Com- I, I was reading comments <laughs> from people that are English teachers that said, that's not right. It used to be M-N-A. Yeah, but there's certain things like the word shop used to be spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are things like that that have evolved but no, when you look up, over the when years. When you look it up in the dictionary, it's M-M-A. And a lot mm. of people, including myself, remember it being M-N-A. Yeah, I don't remember that. And is that like a spelling thing that, hmm. you know, so it, all those... Well, that's along the lines of Berenstain versus Berenstain. Yeah, and that's one of the arguments about that is it's called the Berenstain Bears. So in your head, you're thinking Steen and, it, and you just ignore the fact that it's Stain. Okay, so here's an example. Ryan Braun... He's a brewer. Last name is spelled B-R-A-U-N. Okay, down in the Milwaukee area, we pronounce it Braun. Up in Sheboygan, they pronounce that brown. Yeah. Spelled exactly yeah. the same. And that's where it's going to run into confusion where somebody's going to hear that and assume it's B-R-O-W-N, and then right. all of a sudden that'll be popping up in Mandela Effect. Hmm. One of the ones that I came across constantly researching this that really annoyed me was from the movie Dazed and Confused. Oh, there's love that movie. I, we've I, talked I about know, this. I know, we've talked about that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's like one of our one favorite of movies. movies ever, yeah. But there's a scene in there where Pickford is spinning a globe. Yeah. And if you look, when he goes past Australia, it looks like there's an island. No way. To the west of Australia. Okay, I have this movie on DVD at home. I'm going to have to look this up. By the way, I just wanted to mention that I think the host of The Disappearance of Maura Murray kind of reminds me of Parker Posey. <laughs> she kind of does. <laughs> and speaking of Dazed and Confused, she played like the ultimate bitch in that movie. So this island shows up. There's there's pictures of it all over the internet if you want to look. He's spinning the globe and there's an there appears to be an island to the west of Australia. Southwest, right? Yeah, like okay. west, west, southwest. But... A lot of people say that this is a Mandela effect and say that that's proof that an island used to be there that isn't there anymore, but it's not. I mean, I I watched the scene in the movie. I looked at the pictures online, and I think it's one of two things. I think it's a rip on the globe showing the cardboard beneath it. Could be. Or I think it's the... Top half of what country would be... No, it's, it's the... Uh, I want to say like the copyright information for the people that made the globe. It's like the the box that the copyright information is in. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or like the legend telling you how many inches is a mile. Yeah, but... So it's going to be one of those two things. It's not an island. I, I actually personally believe it's a tear on in the paper on the globe. Okay. But other people say that it's the copyright information and like the legend telling you how many miles an inch is i suppose uh, that... and this shows up this showed up so much in my research and stuff and it drove me nuts because that's people saying that there's proof that there was an island there at one time but the thing about the mandela effect is if it's changed there's no clue behind that something has changed you're not going to find a globe hmm. that has this island on it no right of course you're not but that Just was like one... you're not going to find a book of Berenstain Bears. No. And if you do, it's going to be a misprint. Right. You know, so that's one thing that I constantly came across in here. And then people are putting those out there as Mandela effect stuff. Hmm. And that gets to the last sub theory F, which is bandwagoning. People don't want to be left out. So that's what you're talking about. Yes. That's like a little. Yes. Okay. That's what it is. And that's okay. what people are. It could be. Yeah, it definitely could be that. So people are throwing this out there saying this is proof that the Mandela effect is real when it's not. Right. But like I said, well, in that case, sub theory (laughs) in that situation, (laughs) sub theory F is bandwagoning. People don't want to be led out, you Mm -hmm. know, left out of this and are like, oh, yeah, I remember a thing like that. (laughs) Right. So you start making stuff up. Yeah. It's good that so many people are aware of the Mandela effect, but it's also congesting everything where people are throwing all this stuff out there Mm -hmm. you know and as soon as somebody's like oh i thought i brought my bologna sandwich for lunch today and i didn't it's got to be the mandela effect (laughs) so now everything is becoming the mandela effect speaking of bologna oscar meyer is oh yeah oscar meyer is also i totally forgot about that one (laughs) and i totally remember it the way it is well and it's a song okay here's it's always it's always been oscar mayer but it's 
it's pronounced Oscar Meyer. Right, because I know the song like the back of my hand. It's yep. my baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. My baloney has a second name. It's M A Y E R. Yeah, it was never M E Y E R. It's like you're not going to mix up the alphabet because no. we all know the song. It's the same thing. Anytime you put anything into a song, you're not going to misspell it. That goes to the pronunciation stuff too, where Meyer. the way something is pronounced Brown versus affects Brown. the way that you see it in your head. Man. So yeah, I don't know. That's I'm really starting true. to talk, my, I'm starting to talk myself way. out of the Mandela. Damn it. Now. <laughs> so no, those. I, I agree, though, because that could be how the Berenstein Bears. It could be. But I specifically remember it being, it was never stain. You know. No. That's like the Jiffy one with you. That's like, the, that's <sighs> the one that, that's the. Yeah. Thorn in my side. I remember it being Berenstein. Stuck in your craw. That is the one. Yeah. Hmm. It's the one that pisses me off. <laughs> You don't want to see Kurt get pissed. Ooh, it is not pretty. <laughs> um, and that brings us to theory two, which is... Oh, God, is, we're only on theory two. How many subsets does this one have? Quite a few. Okay. <laughs> theory two is that there is a Mandela effect. Okay. Now and we're talking. Sub-theory A is that it was caused by CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. Okay. Uh, a lot of people buy into this one, that uh, right around the time when people started you know, realizing the stuff is going on is when the Large Hadron Collider started experimenting. Okay, when did this first lady, the Bloom, what was her name? Uh, when did that happen? Fiona Broom, Broom. coined the phrase in 2010. Broom. Broom, okay, sure. So, And it's interesting that Nelson Mandela, I do believe he died in 2011 or 12. Yeah. And when did CERN start working here's, with this? Here is some information about CERN and the Large Hadron. We're going to talk mostly about the Large Hadron Collider okay. because I think CERN might be a future episode in itself. Let's try really hard not to say hard on. It's hard. I know. I, I'm, <laughs> seriously, you had to call it Hadron. Right. Um, Who came up with that? Come on. So here's a little bit about the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider is a particle physics experiment that aims to produce stable micro black holes. I mean, that does not sound like anything somebody should do. But hey, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. Uh, it's trying to produce stable micro black holes, recreate the Big Bang, and find the God particle, a.k.a. the Higgs boson particle. What is it, the point? Why, why do they want to find it? I don't know. Just because they're scientists, <laughs> I guess. I don't know if it's boson or boson, but Higgs bo- we'll say Higgs boson particle is the particle said to be responsible for mass. The Large Hadron Collider is a particle accelerator that collides protons at near light speeds. It is one of the biggest machines in the world, costing $9 billion. It is buried 575 feet underground and runs in a 17-mile circle. The collider is composed of over 9,000 super magnets with a gravitational pull greater than Earth and can exceed temperatures hotter than the sun. Yeah, that's nothing (laughs) nothing to mess with. That's terrifying. Yeah. Aside from magnets, the collider is also composed of coils, strands, filaments, rare metals, and cable. The Large Hadron Collider is said to have the potential to open otherworldly doors to other dimensions, according to the former director for research and scientific computing. And outside of the facility sits a statue of Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. Well, that's foreboding. Yeah, exactly. The Large Hadron Collider first went live on September 10th, 2008, but initial testing was delayed for 14 months from September 19th, 2008 to November 20th, 2009, following a magnet incident that caused extensive damage to over 50 superconducting magnets, their mountings, and the vacuum pipe. On December 8th, 2009, scientists claimed a world record by crashing particles together at the highest energy ever achieved in a laboratory. So it's just weird that it was like a year after that that the, the term Mandela effect was coined. Right. Yeah. You know, so is that a coincidence? Uh, mm-hmm. One of the quantum particles that CERN has been searching for is called gravitons. These elusive particles correspond with how gravity would react between different dimensions. And while they're still only hypothetical, CERN describes them as, if gravitons exist, it should be possible to create them at the Large Hadron Collider, but they would rapidly disappear into extra dimensions. Collisions and particle accelerators always create balanced events, just like fireworks, with particles flying out in all available directions. 
a graviton might escape our detectors, leaving an empty zone that we notice as an imbalance in momentum and energy. We would need to carefully study the properties of the missing object to work out whether it is a graviton escaping to another dimension or something else. Oh, jeez. So, I mean, they're saying theoretically these things could pop to another dimension. <sighs> So people, I love how they just talk about it like other dimensions are yeah. 100% real. Yeah. So people are wondering if them messing around with this stuff wasn't the cause for the Mandela effect. And I can kind of buy this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, from the start, I said, I don't know if this stuff is something that they should be messing around, messing with. around with. I agree. That's that's scary. I mean, just the power that this thing has yep. is terrifying. Yeah. A lot of people think that this has altered reality or caused interdimensional entanglement. Well, and there's a lot of controversy and mystery surrounding CERN to begin with. Yeah. We're going to, that's Are probably going to be. the people we want messing that's around? That's probably going to be an entire God episode. Because there's some weird stuff. Yeah. Weird rituals and. Uh, just a, as an aside, I thought this was interesting. I never knew this. That in Illinois, there's a place called Fermilab. Okay. Which I had never heard of. They had a super collider. I never knew that was there. They had a super collider Nobody's four miles around that. with more than 1,000 superconducting magnets cooled to minus 450 degrees. Uh, in ni- it, was, it started online in 1983, and in 1995, it discovered the top quark particle. Okay. And I never knew this was there. It's called the Tevatron. It's How like come a, it's like heard a, about this? It's like a mini... Large Hadron Hadron Collider. Collider. They shut it down, basically, when the Large Hadron Collider started. But yeah, it's 45 miles west of Chicago, and you will never guess what the name of the town is that it's in. Are they afraid that the two of them running at the same time is going to cause our world to explode? No, I think they took some parts from it. I think they took parts from it. Okay. What's the name of the town? Guess what the name of the town is. I'm never going to guess. Batavia. No way. (laughs) Are you serious? Yeah, Batavia, Illinois. That what is the that's the, Batavia is here. That's where we're yeah, recording we're the recording podcast in Batavia. in Batavia, Wisconsin. That's crazy. But in Batavia, Illinois, they had a super collider. I never knew that. Wow. No, yeah. I didn't know that either. Interesting. So yeah, that's that. So and how I, come the one that CERN put together is way more publicized than this one? I don't one? know. This one was publicized, but it was back. I suppose it was back before yeah. we were paying attention to the, the, stuff the, about the, the, the large Hadron, Hadron Collider <laughs> is way larger than this one. So mm-hmm. like I said, they, they took a lot of magnets. They took a lot of the stuff from this one to put in the LHC. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So a lot of people believe that that this messing around with, you know, making little mini black holes and stuff somehow mm-hmm. opens something up. I, Which is I can buy that. I can totally buy that. Uh, sub theory B is it's proof of parallel universes. Uh, I know I we discussed this previously. I don't remember if it was on our podcast or on Paranormal Palaver. I think Palaver, it was Paranormal Palaver. But there's some people that think that Earth has a defense mechanism where if something devastating well, I don't know about is going to happen. Just like our reality. dimension, yeah. our reality. Like yeah. if there's something crazy that's going to happen that's going to wipe us out we somehow flip to a parallel dimension where that doesn't happen we t- it's like you, you know like you this past saturday the world was supposed to end again that Nibiru <laughs> or planet x was going to yeah. collide with us and we yeah. were going to end and some of these people think that we were supposed to but whatever created this defense mechanism for our reality or for earth or whatever just popped us over to another dimension where it didn't happen right it's like you take a side step to the left and yeah. you continue on an almost identical path that has yep. just slightly different you know details part of me buys into this because it's still when you think about the fact that we're still here right nothing hits us yeah nothing destroys us North Korea hasn't killed us yet. Not yet. The <laughs> podcast hasn't been released yet, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that <laughs> yeah, that hasn't right. happened. But then you think about things like 9-11, you know, really major, tragic There's a lot events. of people that tie... A lot of people think that September 11th had something to do with the Mandela effect. They don't mm-hmm. know... Some people theorize that it was just the shock to the collective consciousness yeah. of America that, Stuff that, like that. that we created sure. the Mandela effect. I don't know... You know, but my question about this parallel universe stuff, like, is if we do flip to another one, where are the people in that one? Do they shift to another one as well? I don't know. It's like I musical don't know. chairs. I don't know. <laughs> but the, that, that's the that's what people think. Left without a chair and is implodes. That for some somehow the walls between the parallel universes mm-hmm. are thinning, and that's how this stuff is. 
Well, and that's a theory about what ghosts are. It's just something bleeding over from another dimension that, you know, isn't quite coming over the whole way. That's possibly what EVPs are. Yeah. Is somebody in a parallel dimension talking that we just happen to record? Yeah. They're just getting a little too close. There's people that think the walls between these different dimensions are thinning to the point where stuff is bleeding through. That's kind of a creepy thought. Uh, Sub theory C, you know, I believe this one because we talked about this in an earlier episode proof that we're living in a computer simulation Mm -hmm. that it's glitches in reality yeah i don't like that theory at all but (laughs) because i don't want to believe that if we are living in a computer simulation there's going to be little glitches from time to time that happen right every once in a while when i'm typing on my keyboard at work like the letter j is now the letter y it like weird stuff like that it's temporary goes away but why does that stuff happen you know one theory that I don't have on here that I read on Reddit that I thought was actually kind of interesting in a geeky way is um, there's something in quantum physics called Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Schrodinger's you cat? You don't know what that is? I've never heard of this. Um, it's like a thought experiment that to a quantum physicist... Did you hear that? I heard something too. Okay. We're going to be investigating later. <laughs> anyway, to a quantum physicist, the premise of the thought experiment is that there's a box that has a cat in it. And there is a device in the box that has a 50-50 chance of releasing a poisonous gas into the box to kill the cat. Okay. It's a 50-50 So far, 50 I don't chance. like this experiment. No, it's a 50-50 chance. <laughs> yeah. I thought I heard something again. <laughs> okay, anyway. I'm like, I'm like nervous Getting now. freaked out. Yeah. It's a 50-50 chance that this device is going to go off and kill the cat. Okay. To anybody else, they would say, is the cat alive or dead? And they would say, I, I don't know. You know, but to a quantum physicist, the cat is both alive and, and dead. dead until you actually open the box and check. Mm. That's called the observer effect where you don't know until you look. So up until that point, it exists in both states. Hmm. And one of the theories that I read is that somebody thinks that a lot of these things, like the girl having braces, the girl not having braces, kind of exist. They existed in this flux state. But the observer effect set one of them in stone. Hmm. Not always the right one. Right. But what I thought was interesting was that the observer in this case that's doing the observer effect, this person believes is actually Google and the internet. Because now that we Google all this stuff, it becomes concrete. So I thought that huh. was kind of an interesting It is. It's inter- an interesting it's a, theory. It's a spin I've never heard, that's for yeah. sure. So that's just it kind of reminds me of the idea. My, I have a coworker who has a weird way of thinking about it's not really related to this, but it reminds me of it. He said that there's no such thing as dying. You're either alive or you're dead. Yeah. You're alive until you're dead. There's no such thing as in between or dying. No. And, and that's, that's like, it's kind of, I, I feel like that's a, you know, a parallel. You know, I was analogy. thinking about, while I was driving here, I was thinking about, I don't know how that got on the subject of thinking about this, but that there's really no time. Time it doesn't. Uh, I try not to think. You know, about time this. doesn't really. The only, the only. We invented time, time. is an idea. There's no yeah. time. I mean, you're always in the present moment. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. Ah, oh, don't do that. <laughs> so, anyway, that's going, really going, oh, that's the stuff that keeps me awake at night. I freak myself out. Going back to this sub theory D. Okay. Time travelers. Okay. A lot of people think that. When all this hullabaloo about 2012 happened, that the world was supposed to end, but time travelers came back and prevented that from happening. But they also caused other things to, like the butterfly effect, where they've done yeah. things that had consequences Changed they didn't just a realize little bit. about. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Why it would change the color of the A team's van? I don't really know. <laughs> right. It seems like really. Weird stuff. Significant things, yeah. though, you know. And going going back uh, just quickly to the Mandela effect doesn't exist. People bring up the fact that a lot of this stuff is old stuff from, like, the 70s, yeah, the there's 80s, nothing recent. our childhood. Yeah. That is just further proof that that's us misremembering stuff yeah. from the, the past. Just one more thing to set us aside from apart from millennials, because they're not going to remember any of this No. Stuff. <laughs> But yeah, time travelers. No offense, millennials. I love you. Time travelers is yeah. one of the theories. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know about that. No. 
I, I can't really put it all together with that. I mean, uh, why? I just, you know. We could have a whole show on time traveling. Yeah. But long story short, as much as I can buy into stuff like us being a computer simulation, I don't really buy into time traveling. Yeah. I could see traveling to a parallel universe, but I couldn't see, I can't see. Going forward or backwards no, there's through time. Especially backwards. Just too much causality. That yeah. I, it's just not. Yeah. I agree. But that is one of the theories that time what travelers. What Stephen Hawking think? <laughs> time travelers changed. Okay. You know, they stopped us from being destroyed in 2012, but they also did some screwy <laughs> things that changed. But wasn't it just the Mayan calendar? Isn't that what the whole 2012 thing was about? Was the Mayan uh, There's a calendar? lot of stuff that says, I don't know. From my personal experience, that was a weird time because I had weird things happen around that time. Yeah. Like 2012, I think something was supposed to happen. I know that makes me sound like a nut, but I think something... Sometimes you feel like a nut. Yeah, something was supposed to happen. So what? I had, I had weird things happen around that time, hmm. like weird time-related things. Oh, yeah. We've talked about that. Yeah. Just like just crazy things. Like you'd notice the same time every time you looked at Oh, yeah, at like the 11-11s. Yeah, but then 11, I also had like this one thing that happened right around there where I went to my brother's house one day. And he gave me back a Nintendo 3DS game of mine that he borrowed. Okay. So he gave it to me. I took it home. When I got home, I took it out of my pocket, put it on. We had like a bamboo place setting thing in the middle mm-hmm. of the, the kitchen table. I know exactly what you're talking yep. about. I set it on there. <clears throat> then think again about it. The next day, I ended up going back to Corey's house for something. Walked in. He gave me the game. No. And I said, you gave this to me yesterday. You sure it wasn't a dream? No. He said, you gave this to me yesterday. And... I said, you gave this to me yesterday. And he said, no, I didn't. Took it home and the game wasn't where I remember. There was a lot of stuff like that that happened. Chills from yeah, that. there's a lot of stuff that happened weird Ooh, around I don't know what I would that do if that year. happened to me. Uh, I yeah. don't, oh, I don't like that sort of thing. You know, I had, uh, I was friends with a girl named Carissa at that time that was big with the, this kind of stuff. And she was experiencing the same stuff, sometimes the same day where she would, email me and say this happened to me today and that was something that happened to me too where all of a sudden you realize like three days had passed when you didn't think they did Hmm. so it was just a weird 2012 time was weird (laughs) around 2012 so part of me can kind of buy into something was gonna happen and Hmm. didn't but that's the time traveler stuff okay uh sub theory e mind control by satan or the illuminati (laughs) Uh, yeah, I think the Illuminati is probably a little more <laughs> likely than Satan. Yeah. Uh, they're theorized that the Illuminati or Satan or whatever is working on mind control. And these are little f- baby steps they're taking to test it out. Hmm. You know? Well, um, it, you know, you think about the, what is it, the Montauk experiments yeah. and stuff like that? Government mind yeah. control I, experiments. I'd like to I mean, a, sure, I'd this like stuff happens. Yeah, on the we Montauk. should talk about that. Um, so that stuff absolutely happens, but to happening just to the general public yeah, is a little so bit much. different nope. unless it's, you know, subliminal messages and TV and radio, which of course we're Americans watch a ridiculous amount of television. So I guess I could see how that would happen, but why do only, you know, some of us, I, that's what I can't wrap my head around is why some of us are so adamant about it and other people and i have a hard time finding people actually who don't have the memories that i have no of I, I know things. i agree i agree that's why it's so hard to write it off as a brain thing yeah i should ask my mom i don't think i've ever brought this up with my mom she's 70 so I, i'm curious to see yeah. what of these things she would remember and how she would remember them it's just either way it's not good either way we're our brains are completely misremembering things and that's scary or sure. reality itself is changing we're all getting alzheimer's <laughs> Yeah, or something else is happening. Yeah. I think the something else is a little bit scarier. But And the last sub-theory is, and this one surprised me that I actually found this quite a bit, is that some people believe Earth is currently moving to a higher dimension and humans are ascending, you know, like uh, evolution. Yeah. That we're moving up. And that this one popped up a lot. A lot of people mentioned an author named Dolores Cannon. Okay. She wrote a book called The Three Waves of Volunteers and the New Earth. And this is a quote from her. She was a hypnotherapist. And she said, when you see thousands and thousands of clients, as I do as a therapist, a counselor, and hypnotherapist, you see a common thread going through many of the cases. 
earlier on, it seemed to be that people go to a past life and I'd find some of their answers there. And within the last five years or so, I began to see clients who weren't at all going into a past life on earth. I began to find out they had never been to earth before and that they had come here directly from God, from some source, from other planets, other dimensions where they were beings of light. That's a common thread that I have been finding. And that's where I came up with the theory of the three waves of volunteers. Hmm. She believes that earth is going, earth and humans are going through a major transformation. Uh, the, the entire planet is shifting its vibration into a new dimensional frequency and that people are, are being like reborn. Humans are being reborn with the spirits of these people that are from these other dimensions or God or whatever. Huh. I don't know. That's pretty out there. Uh, yeah. She has three different classes of souls incarnating on Earth. She calls the first one the first wave, which is people in their late 40s, 50s, and early 60s. And these volunteers are disturbed by the violence, anger, and hate that they experience on Earth, have the hardest time adjusting to life here, and many of them try to commit suicide. The second wave are in their late 20s and 30s. These volunteers are more comfortable in their bodies and are said to be beacons or channels of energy who can affect others just by being near them. Their mission of sharing their energy with others means that they don't have to do anything but just be. The third wave, called the new children, many of whom are now teenagers, have the knowledge needed to exist on the planet after the shift and transformation takes place. Their DNA is subtly more advanced, and the greatest challenge they currently face is being misunderstood by humans as having a condition, ADHD, that needs to be medicated. Hmm. That's her theory, and a lot of people kind of support this, that we are ascending, but my, my argument against this is that when you look at the world today i think we're doing anything but us right we're moving i think we're so moving far backwards, backwards. <laughs> yeah but this this is something that's come up a lot in the past few years that i've heard where people think that we are moving to a new dimension spiritually and physically i'd be okay with that i i think i'm in well i think i'm in a couple but the of thing is the, the second wave the people in their 20s and 30s that are comfortable being in their bodies and are beacons or channels of energy who can affect others just by being near them sounds a lot like empaths mm -hmm. which was something we're gonna i think maybe our next episode we're gonna do empaths yeah so i thought that was kind of interesting that that could be an explanation for empaths hmm. except neither of us are in our 20s or 30s no <laughs> but, I, but that's the thing though i actually i think that's kind of a contradiction because as someone who could be an empath, I'm highly disturbed by violence Yeah, and by what's going on in yeah. the world. I do kind of fit into that category of the forties, fifties and sixties where I, I'm just absolutely appalled and sickened by what I see on the news and just the violence. There's so much yep. violence. I'm I not totally gonna, agree. I have no desire to kill myself. I'm I, not in that I, group of people. I but associate myself more with the ones that are in their late twenties and thirties that affect other people's energy, just being near them. Mm hmm. You know, so I don't know. I mean, some of this kind of makes sense to me a little bit, but I was just kind of surprised at how much this theory came up in talking about the Mandela effect, that that's the world changing, getting ready to move to this other dimension. What happens when it does move? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so that's, <sighs> those are the theories. Wow. That's a lot to swallow. So, <laughs> I know. So, that being said, what is your opinion on the Mandela oh, effect? Lord. I don't know. <laughs> good answer uh, yeah i don't i don't know i i i think i stick with my earl my first thing that i said when we started talking about it. i don't think there's a good enough explanation i can't buy that we're all just misremembering something i don't know that i can buy that we're moving to a new dimension i i don't know i think it's, it could be suggestibility i think it could be a combination of a lot of different things i just don't it's so Hit or miss, it seems. Some things you remember that I have no knowledge of or memory yeah, of, yep. and then, and some we totally agree on. So it's just really weird how it, you know, seems to skip over some people and only hits people with certain things. And I, I don't know. I, I just feel like there's nothing that fully explains what's going on. I agree. I mean, I, 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 I think it exists. I mean, I base yeah. that a lot on my New Zealand thing, where mm -hmm. it's constantly bopping around that area of That's the of the planet. I need uh, to take a good look at, look at where it is on a map and like memorize it so that I can kind of track that. But as far as like it being, I think some of it could tie in with the internet, with the fact that people are so connected now where if something seems weird to you, you can post it on a message board and within an hour have a hundred people agree with you. Mm -hmm. Where back in the day before the internet, you really, 
couldn't. A lot of there's a lot of discussion on whether or not this is something that just started happening in the 2000s or if this is something that has happened throughout history. And right, we just didn't have didn't, the means didn't have the to ability to communicate it. with yeah. each other about it until the 2000s. And you know, when people say how often does this Could happen? Be. I mean, the woods that I walk through on my my trail a tree could move in the middle of that woods five feet. You'd never notice and you, it. You would never notice. Blades of grass could be there one day and gone the next yeah. day. And you would never notice it. So it's like, on what scale? I mean, is, is this scale getting bigger? Hmm. But I'm I'm a believer that something is happening. I kind of believe the CERN thing. I kind of believe the... I Yeah, I find that very plausible. I do too. I do too. And I, I, I do believe parallel universes... Yeah, I, I mean, there's there's been talk, uh, scientific papers released in the last few years where they say parallel universes are a thing. This is yeah. like a reality. So uh, stuff that used to be science fiction is reality. So I don't know. But on the other hand, a lot of the arguments against it <laughs> make really good sense pretty to pretty plausible too. too. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, I believe that there is something to there's it. Something to it. I just don't know what. I mean, my New Zealand thing is just crazy because I I know how it sounds but I remember it being in a completely different place. And it's not yeah. like, well, maybe it was. It's no, I remember looking, vividly looking at maps, knowing the relationship between where New Zealand was and where Australia, Australia was. Yeah. That's hard to argue with. But why there? Why is it, you know? Yeah. Why isn't it, you know, where Mexico is in relation to, you know, the United States or whatever? And the Berenstein Bears one where drives Alaska me nuts. Is. Yeah, the, I know uh, that the one too. The Moonraker one with the James Bond girl with the braces drives me crazy because I see her smile in my head. <laughs> That's funny. Because I remember seeing it and thinking her braces are kind of big, yeah, you know, really? and, and she doesn't have them anymore. That's weird. So I think something is happening. I don't know why. And I don't know if it's a good thing. I lean towards it's not a good thing. No, it's a very unsettling feeling too when you realize that something that you remember vividly and always thought to be is never was. No, the fruit of the loom was one never is crazy a thing to me because I I can see in my head what the logo looked like. I know where the cornucopia was. The cornucopia, yeah, that one is new to me. I I don't remember that one at all. I don't know. I think something's going on. I don't know which of these explanations makes the most sense. I can kind of understand them all. You know, I can kind of buy into the reality being a computer simulation. Yeah. Well, I'd love for our strangers to get in on this conversation. Let us know what you what think. You think. Do you have a Mandela effect that you have experienced with that we didn't talk about? Let us know. I And this is one of those topics that people just, it's so frustrating because it's so personal to everybody. So if you have a, a Mandela effect that you want to share with us, we'd be happy to bring it up in housekeeping. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we've exhausted this topic today. I do too. <laughs> I just, and, and the sad part is there are probably like a hundred more Mandela effects yeah, that we like don't I know. Like I said, if you're interested in this, go on Google, type in Mandela effect, go on YouTube. YouTube. Oh man, You can find so many, so many videos about Mandela effect. But, we talked uh, about the Maura Murray rabbit hole. There, this is a rabbit hole. Take a lot of them with a grain of salt. Yeah. You know, when somebody Some says... Some people get a, really nitpicky. When somebody said a movie quote changed, not necessarily. Right, it's or just a people logo changed. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, are we are we wrapping this baby up? I think we are gonna snug as a bug in a rug. But yeah, please get to us. Uh, let us know. Get to us. We're in Batavia. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how you said that. Please get to us. I thought that sounded okay. <laughs> I'm getting giddy. Hit us up. <laughs> yeah. Drop us a line. <laughs> Let us know if your ass got mandela <laughs> Your ass got mandela Your ass just got mandela I need to make a t-shirt that says that. My ass just got mandela <laughs> I got mandela and all I got out of it was this lousy t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you just snorted. I know, I just snorted. I'm not going to cut any of that. <laughs> no, it's funny. That's all A material. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> so let us know if you've ever had a Mandela effect. Let us know what you think of the Mandela effect and just let us know whatever you would like to talk about. Yeah. And if you have anything for housekeeping, I know people are kind of following some of the stuff. Yeah. And Sophie, sending us Sophie links. sends us a lot of stuff, posts yeah, lots awesome. of stuff on. Uh, I feel like we don't have to do any work. People just, I don't know. People <laughs> posting stuff the in a strangers group all the time. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I, I'm loving that. So keep it up. And uh, yeah. Remember to send us your stories for our 15th episode. And, and thank you guys so much for listening. I yeah. know there's hundreds of podcasts, and I know you don't have to waste an hour and a half of your week listening to us babble. Or an hour and 40 minutes. But, but you do. So yeah. thank you for that. 
Yeah. And and if you have suggestions or comments or constructive you, yep. criticism, we're, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah, we will. We want to keep doing this. Um, we hope that you guys are enjoying it because we're having a lot of fun. Yeah. So. It's and we're frankly, we're not going to stop, to. even if you're not listening. <laughs> so. even, if, even if it's just us listening yep. to our own podcast. We have a, a loyal group of maybe five people who would still listen. So. And we love you guys. Yeah, we do. So now I think we're going to go investigate the school because yeah. we have heard a couple weird things tonight. We have now. Now it's kind of creepy. It is a little creepy now. <laughs> so we'll let you know next time if we found anything. If you ever hear from yeah, us again. Yeah, if you ever hear from us again. But yeah, we'll we'll hopefully have some evidence to share. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. But until then, you guys. Stay strange. Stay strange. strange.